Well, welcome back once again as we continue to make some progress on this two seat buggy. This is becoming a long drawn out process, but I think you're beginning to see there are a lot of little steps and little details that go into building or restoring a horse drawn vehicle. So a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I built a set of shafts for this buggy. Then I built the basic body of the pole. And then last week I went through and built the neck yoke and the double trees. Well, this week I need to complete the shafts. And one of the biggest questions that I get asked often over and over is what size single tree do I use for my horse? Well, the first thing I ask usually is what's the application? What are you hooking to? There's two different criteria that you use when you're choosing your size of your single tree. If you are on a, a single set of shafts or hooking to a single set of shafts, the single tree is designed to fit the shafts, not the horse. When these shafts are finished, there will be some retaining straps down the side of the shafts that the tugs or traces will feed through to attach to the single tree. So you want the ends of the single tree or the width of the single tree to be out wide enough close to the side of the shafts so that the traces can follow these trace keepers and keep in line with the shafts. When you are hooking to a double tree that is a little bit different, the single trees then are fitted to the horse themselves. The width of the double tree and the width of the neck yoke and the length of the pole then become fitted to the horses. But in the set of shafts, it is different. Single trees are fitted to the shafts, not to the horse. So this week, anyway, I'm going to finish up these shafts, and then I've got to build a uh, dash for this buggy and show you what the inside framework looks like as we put this together also. So this buggy has a set of mechanical brakes. 
This is where the pressure of the brake block is applied to the tire itself to stop the wheel. In the case when you have steel tires, oftentimes you will apply a rubber pad to the brake block. Well this buggy has rubber tires, so therefore I'm going to do the reverse and apply a steel pad to the brake block. The greatest braking coefficient is steel to rubber. So I'm going to do the converse on this, put a steel pad up against the rubber tire. When I did this, I also took a couple different approaches just to kind of demonstrate that there's usually more than one way to skin that cat. Just because I do something in a particular fashion doesn't mean that's the way it always has to be done. There's always option B or maybe even C.
You know, wherever I can, I generally like to use old original irons when I am building something new, even if I have to modify it. Well, I have a few old dash frames around, but none of them seem to fit, so I thought, well, what the heck, I'll just build one from scratch to kind of see that process. Well, the bottom framework style is an old style that they don't make anymore. So I went through and thought, well, how am I going to make this depression for these bolts that you'll see how I'm going to make them here in a minute. Anyway, so I just thought, well, let's, let's just see how I can do this. Well, I went through, obviously, a couple different methods, and the last one worked, worked better. And, you know, if I had to do this as a repeated procedure, I would just make a solid hexagon and press them in. It would be the quickest and the cleanest. But it was kind of fun to experiment to see what would happen. Anyway, let's go ahead and finish this dash.
Well, it's like I said, there's lots of little steps that go together in putting a buggy together. So I hope this whole process of building this one basically from scratch is showing you some of those details. So once again, thanks for following along and as always, thanks for watching.